Uh, I'm Ellie Peterson, and I'm an author and illustrator. Uh, and um, some of my books are Bees Bees, which I've illustrated by Catherine Pryor, uh, and the Julia Copernicus series, which uh, consists of It's a Round Round World and The Reason for the Seasons. So I thought that I would start with showing you a little bit of my process today. Um, I have a couple different processes that I use, and I was going to start with the one that I've used for all the books that I have out right now, which are done in watercolor and colored pencil. So what I usually start with is just a sketch. And more and more I'm doing all of my sketch work in Procreate because it's easier for me to size things the way that I need. I don't have to erase a whole bunch of stuff. If something doesn't look the way I want it, I can just kind of like grab a head and make it smaller or bigger um, or just grab an arm and change the angle of it slightly. Um, so, you know, I open up a new Procreate uh, document for my myself and um, just pick a sketching pencil and a good size and then I'll just start with some something that I like. So maybe I'm going to make a little a mushroom today. And erase what I don't want. Put a little face on him. And then I'll make that a little lower opacity and then give myself kind of a nicer outline after I know what I want. Okay, so let's say I like that, then my next step is to print what I have. So I'll show you another one that I've printed up. Um, this was just a little picture I did of Julia Copernicus for some bookmarks. So I started out with that, um, but I want to paint her just like I did um, in the book. So I print it up and then uh, I'm going to take it over to my, um, my tracing pad. Okay, so now I have my image, it's on uh, my light pad, and then I'm just gonna put whatever kind of watercolor paper I'm planning to use. And when I use um, colored pencils, I try to use uh, 140 pound hot press paper because um, it's really smooth and so it doesn't make my colored pencil lines look really bumpy. So um, I start just by putting that on there and then I use a black Prismacolor pencil which is used by my favorite illustrator Marla Frazee. I think that's where I got the idea for it initially. I just like the soft smooth color that I get out of it. So I'll just kind of go carefully through and outline everything that I see. And I will need to go over it again later because when I start using the watercolors, it will wash out a little bit of the colored pencil as well. And that way I don't have any pencil lines that I have to worry about erasing. I just have the smooth colored pencil outline that I'm hoping for. I also use the color pencil a little bit for shading, um, but that will come later after my watercolor is dry. One thing that I kind of struggle with a little bit too with the color pencils is, you know, as you use it, the, the tip starts getting flatter and flatter and changes your line consistency. So I'm kind of always rotating the pencil and sharpening the pencils. Um, I have a stack of pencils that are literally like three inches long <laughs> because I don't know what to do with them when they're that long and I don't want to throw them away. I have big shoes. In my mind, she wears Doc Martens. That's just the kind of girl she is. There you go. Ready for the next step? Oh, 
Okay, so I thought I would also show this other technique that I've been working with in which I make these um, textured papers and then use those for images that I create digitally. So I start out with just cheap watercolor paper. This does not have to be nice. I think I bought this like in the discount bin at Ross or something. It's not even an art store. Um, and I just start out by, it is 140 pounds, it's cold press, and I start by just making it super duper wet. Like so wet that it's dripping all over. And I kind of let that start to soak into the paper so that the paper will accept the color really well. And I wanted to make this one, I have this um, gamboge that I really like and I think it's a really cool color. So I wanted to do one that's got that intense yellow, um, almost rusty brown going on. And so I'm just gonna dab into some gamboge here and then just start getting crazy with it, putting it all over the place. And I don't want it to be consistent at all. I want it to have areas where it's way thicker and there's too much of it uh, and areas where it kind of looks stripey and grainy like this. So I don't want to overwork it um, so I can maintain all of that texture there. There might not be enough water, so go back. Uh, so now I have a bunch of these that I've scanned in and brought into um, my iPad. So I'm gonna move all this stuff out of the way and bring my iPad over here. Let's see, wake up. So here's my mushroom. Should I put that down a little bit? How's that? Up a little bit? That way? Okay, there we go. So now what I'm going to do is um, lay in some color. So let me see. There's my upper layer. I want to insert a photo of my Oh, let me see here, my scanned colored papers. There we go. So I want that pretty red because I want it to look like a toadstool. So that's one that I've already scanned in and manipulated a little bit. Um, and I'm going to just kind of size it the way that I like and look for some of the areas of texture that I kind of want to show up on the mushroom. So maybe like, maybe that spot looks kind of good. I like it where it's a little brighter there. Um, and then I'm going to erase where I don't want to see the color. And I like to select an eraser that gives it sort of a torn paper look. Um, so the one that I think works really well for that is I go to inking and dry ink. So check what the size is here. Yeah, there it is. That's what I kind of want. So I'm going to actually go do a quick airbrush, large hard brush to sort of get my zone so I don't have too much work to do. Zoom in a little bit. You can see the graininess there that is kind of left behind and I like that because it just makes it look a little bit more like a multimedia or kind of a collage art look like that. So if I take the lines away, um, that's, that's what you see left. Okay, so I'll put that one back in and now I'm going to add my next color. So I'll go back to insert a photo and I'm going to grab um, like this one for the mushroom stem. That seems like a good mushroom stem color, like right there. So this is kind of actually why I like to have it inconsistent is because sometimes I find spots of color that work better for something than others. Like I really want this to be kind of light. Um, so I'm going to go all the way over to here and I just like the little stripey bits, maybe over like that so I get a little bit more of that. Um, and same thing, where I'm going to take away the color that I don't want. And just kind of large swaths first. You 
can see where the red hiding underneath is starting to come out now. And I can show how I do some of the detail work. Oh, maybe that one. Oh yeah, that's going to be cute for the spots. So I'll just show you guys a, a few works that I've done in this style um, that I'm having a lot of fun with. So this is one that I did for Thanksgiving, um, all with that textured look. And this is the Korean proverb I love. I kept in kind of the black sketchy lines. And another one I did is this one, which has been kind of the inspiration for uh, a book about monarchs that I'm working on with Catherine. Okay, I guess a big part of my process is actually um, getting critiqued. And I have two wonderful critique groups. I have a writing critique group, the Night Writers, and an illustration critique group, the Broad Strokes. And I take work to them every chance that I can because I think it makes me just so much better and so much stronger. Um, and so I just have stacks and stacks of dummies and manuscripts and concept art um, that they have given me feedback on. And I don't always take all of it, um, but I do um, always think to myself, if I hear an issue come up twice, whether it's between the two critique groups or in the same critique group, then I know I definitely need to look at it. If I just hear it once, could just be a personal preference thing, but if I hear the same critique or issue come up more than one time, then I know it's something that I definitely need to look at. Um, and I've just been really um, grateful to them for helping me to become a better author and illustrator. I look at the person that I was who started this six years ago and the work that I was putting out then and the work that I'm putting out now, six years later, and I know that it's so much better and I think about what it might be like a few years down the line and I know that it will be even stronger than than what it is right now. These are my books in the order that they were created. The Bees Bees, written by our local lovely Catherine Pryor and illustrated by me. Uh, it's about a little girl who falls in love with the bees at her city park and then they start to disappear and she works to figure out a way to bring them back. So she becomes a little community activist, if you will. Um, so loved doing this. This was my first uh, project. This is my first traditionally published book. And uh, I am ever thankful to Catherine for letting me get my feet wet with her baby here. Um, my next one, and the first that I've authored and illustrated myself is It's a Round Round World, um, which I published with Kane Press. Um, came out last fall, and um, this was just super exciting. Uh, I submitted this to probably 35 to 40 different um, editors who were open to submissions and agents, and within a couple weeks I had um, two offers from some uh, publishers and ended up landing my agent Adria with this one. So um, it's about how we know that the earth is round, not just by going out into space, but how we can tell from our observations here on earth and stars this little um, spunky uh, girl scientist, Julia, Julia Copernicus. And I was really excited that I got an opportunity to turn this into a book series, the second of which, um, by the time you see this, will already be out. The reason for the seasons, actually, for this time, comes out on Tuesday, February 11th. But like I said, it'll be out, so get it if you haven't already. Um, and this is another one dealing with student misconceptions about scientific concepts. So 
A lot of kids and even adults think that the reason for the seasons is the Earth's proximity to the sun, that we have summer when the Earth's closer to the sun and that we have winter when it's further away, when really, spoiler alert, <laughs> it's the tilt of the Earth. Um, and so that is how this one worked and it's been getting um, some really great reviews so far with uh, the way that it deals with the kids' misconceptions. So hoping to have a third one um, in this series, maybe on the moon. Uh, but we'll have to see if that happens and um, hopefully many more books to come.